NASA says a hole in the sun up to 30 times the size of Earth could blasters with high-speed solar winds. And they are very, very speedy, because at 1.8 million miles per hour, you wouldn't want to fly a kite in them. But I can tell you, just how dangerous can they be? Well, don't take it from us. Let us speak to the expert. He's the space and planetary scientist, Andy Lound. Andy, good morning to you. Um, these things come around every 11 years, apparently, but why are we all getting excited about this one in particular this time round? Uh, good morning, both. Yeah, it's an 11 year cycle. So we, we, we don't get them just every 11 years. They happen during a period of a cycle. And we're coming towards the maximum solar cycle at the moment, which, which will extend between now and 2026. And what we have is that the sun is essentially a ball of plasma. And the swirling high temperatures of the plasma generate strong magnetic fields. And normally these magnetic fields sort of loop on themselves nice and neatly on the sun itself, but you can actually get uh, a, a, an area where the magnetic field pushes itself all the way up through the corona, which is why we call it a coronal hole. And that's where it looks dark because it's a cooler region because the, the material is being blasted out from the sun itself uh, and it speeds up the solar wind, the particles from the sun itself uh, into space. And that's where you see the gap there, the hole. Um, it's not really a hole as such. It's a hole in the corona rather than anything else. And this speeds up material flying into space towards anywhere in the solar system, really. Normally, these are just at the polar regions. But during the 11 year cycle, as you come into the end of the cycle, you start to get them on other parts of the sun as well. All amateur astronomers are very familiar with this because they observe it quite clearly indeed. Um, and, and, and this is fine, and the newspapers have been covering it quite well, although a little bit ropey in some parts. Um, uh, and this material, when it hits the Earth, um, causes our atmosphere to swell. It can cause electronic damage to satellites and things like that. But the big fear is, is if during a coronal hole, we get something called a, a coronal mass ejection, must be careful how I say that, uh, where you have a huge amount of burst of material coming towards the Earth itself. Now, this is a very dangerous thing that could happen because we're worried on the Earth at the moment of what's called a Carrington event. The last one happened in 1859, and when the Carrington event hit the Earth, uh, you can see it here on, on these pictures, it's to the right where you see suddenly this blast, blast of material out. Now, this is a huge event. Now, that's obviously not going towards the Earth. It's going away from the Earth. But if one of these hits the Earth, um, in 1859, it actually knocked out the telegraph system and created some fires on the Earth. If that was to hit us now, one of these events, it would knock out satellites, it would damage electronic systems, it could wipe hard drives, it could cause, because everything's electronic now, and that is the day. It's almost like an electromagnetic burst you get from an atomic blast in the upper atmosphere, only this would be millions of times more powerful than that. And that's what people are concerned about, this kind of event. And it will happen around a coronal hole. And so when you get a coronal hole facing the Earth, you're sitting there a little bit edgy, thinking, yeah, where, where, where's this going? Um, but we're not anticipating anything particularly happening, apart from a general rural display, perhaps minor interference with communications at the moment. So nobody should worry. But if we did get a, a mass ejection towards us, then it would be time to hunker down. And it's well, why well, a lot of the... I was going to say, hunker down. I mean, because we know there is at least the possibility of, of a CME head, you know, heading in our direction, wh what can be put in place? Can anything be put in place to protect the, what we all rely on now to survive? Many systems actually uh, are shielded to actually protect them for that. For instance, a lot of data systems, uh, the severe... Critical data systems, if you uh, are buried inside mountains, that's why you have things like Cheyenne Mountain with all the the defence systems buried under a mountain. It's not just for a nuclear attack; it's for an EM burst. Uh, if you've got uh, the the cloud. Uh, some companies actually bury those underground or they're actually in mountains again to keep them operational. And that's because they would survive such an attack like that. 